This video is about the Laurent series theorem in complex analysis. So basically Laurent series theorem in complex analysis is the Taylor series theorem in complex analysis but for multiply connected regions. Yes, we need multiply connected regions for complex analysis. So that's why we need a theorem which expands functions in multiply connected regions. So for understanding this video, you first need to know how we proved Taylor series in complex analysis. And also you need to know some basic stuff about Cauchy integral theorem for multiply connected regions. How we proved that. So now let's get started. This theorem states that if there is a function f said which is analytic in a ring shaped region R and what is a ring shaped region that is a multiply connected region bounded by two concentric circles C and C1. For example, if this is a region, this will be bounded by two concentric circles which have the same center C and C1 of radius R and R1 respectively. And then for all Z in R, there will be a function f said for a all z in r which can be written like this this is the expression for Lorentz series and this is the Lorentz series also this a naught a1 a2 is written like this here a n is equal to 1 upon 2 pi i integration along a curve f t by t minus a n plus 1 dt where gamma being any closed curve encircling c1 i call this symbol gamma because it looks like a gamma function okay so now we have to prove this theorem. So how will we prove this? We will take the multiply connected region, make a cut. This is how we did it in the Cauchy integral theorem proof. And then we will just take the Cauchy integral formula and put our things like we did in Taylor series theorem. And then we will get our answer as we will look at the proof. So let's look at the proof. We take the multiply connected region and make a cut AB and it will become a simply connected region like this one. And we know that according to the Cauchy integral for Mula, F side is equal to 1 upon 2 pi i integration along this curve. And this will constitute C, AB, C1 and B2A, Ft by T minus Z, DT, where Ft is the function, which is the gamma curve encircling c1 so now we know that we can expand this closed line integral to different line integrals so also first thing i want to tell you that in the cauchy integral theorem proof i did a little mistake that i wrote this circle symbol with these two we don't write it like generally because these are now open curves this is not a closed curve now these are all not closed so this was a mistake there I also wrote a comment there, so please don't do this mistake there. Also, this will be a bracket in here. So now, we will break this into C, A, B, C1 and B. A. And we know that A, B and B are opposite, so they will cancel each other. And we will change this direction of C1 from our positive direction to a negative direction, which will give us a negative sign in here. So we got this. So we need to solve these two integrals and when we solve these two integrals get their value and we will reach our lower end series. So now let's expand this thing 1 upon t minus z as we did in Taylor series. So we will write 1 upon t minus z which will be equal to 1 upon t minus a plus a minus z because minus a plus a will cancel each other which will give us this and we will separate these two as we did in Taylor series and we will take the t minus a outside and take it out there to get a negative power and then we will use the binomial theorem expansion to get this series and then we will multiply 1 upon t minus a inside to get this expression. Now I am not going in much detail how we are doing this because I have done it in the Taylor series expansion for complex analysis. Now we will do similarly like we did in Taylor series for complex analysis, multiply it by ft because in this side we need this thing. So we will make it equal to this thing. So we will do the further things, multiply it by ft, integrate along the curve c and multiply by 1 upon 2 pi i. Also one thing in here, we are doing it for the curve c. And for the curve c, you can see that c the t minus a will be greater than z minus a. 
so mod of t minus a will be greater than mod of z minus a so in here in this as we did in tlr series the t minus a was greater than z minus a so we took out the t minus a outside and then binomial expansion on the thing which remained inside the brackets so when we will do for c1 it will be the opposite of that so take care of that now let's do further for first c then now we have multiplied it and made a expression and we see that this is 1 upon 2 pi i summation n is equal to 0 to infinity now take a look at this one in here okay first take a look at this one then you can see how this came there is a z minus a and there is a t minus a square that means if there is a power of z minus a which is 1 there is a 1 plus 1 which is 2 so there is a z minus a raised to our n and there is a t minus a raised to power n plus 1 if there is a power of 0 there will be 1 so we get this one so we get the final expression as this which is going from n equal to 0 to infinity because there is a term which have no z minus a raised to power n so we just wrote this expression as a summation makes it easier to look and now we will do simply make the other things which are other than z minus a raised to power n as a n so putting this as a n and now a n is equal to 1 upon 2 pi i integration along c f t upon t minus a raised to the power n plus 1 dt so now this is for first integral remember the 2 1 upon 2 pi i is included in here so this 1 upon 2 pi i is also included now let's see for the other integral in this one the mode of z minus a will be greater than mode of t minus a because the circle c1 is encircled by the curve gamma so now we will do the same thing 1 upon t minus z and we will get this expression as we add and subtract a but in this one we will take out z minus a outside because this one is greater than and whatever thing which is greater we will take that out in Lorentz series. This is really helpful. When we will do questions on Lorentz series, you will see how this is very important because we always take the greater thing outside. Always remember this. They will tell you that expand for mode of that greater than 2. Then you will get out the mode of that. But if there is 2 greater than mode of that, then you will take out 2 and expand accordingly. So we took this out and we got this expression with a negative power. We will do the binomial expansion and multiply this inside to get this expression. I am not going into too much detail because this is fairly easy to do if you have done the Taylor series expansion for complex synthesis. Now to make this expression as the expression we got for integrals, we will multiply by ft, integrate along the curve c1 with respect to dt, multiply by 1 upon 2 pi i with a negative sign now you will see from here this negative sign came this came from in here this negative sign here so that we get a positive thing in here and we get this negative sign in here we took this negative sign to the left side because in our integral there is a negative sign which will compensate that so now we got this expression after multiplying by ft and integrating along c1 with respect to dt and we get this inside now take a look at here in here carefully here summation is equal to n is equal to 1 to infinity because there is no term with z minus a raised to the power 0 so 1 upon z minus a raised to the power n and there is an integration along c1 and there is a term if there is n then there is n minus 1 in here for t minus a because if there is a z minus a sure 1 there is no t minus a so we write it in summation form like this 1 upon 2 pi i this bracket summation n equal to 1 to infinity 1 upon z minus a raised to power n integration along c1 t minus a raised to power n minus 1 ft dt so just changing this to a summation so that things become easy so now we will write everything else as a n minus 1 because here is a minus n in place of n and keep z minus a raised to power minus n as this so we get this expression now and here a minus n is equal to this see for a n we have n in here so for a minus n we have minus n for here so the expression for a n is valued for for a minus n so now if we put these both integral values in our 
integral question which we got after solving this if we put this in here we get this that summation n equal to 0 to infinity z minus a raised to power n a n plus summation n equal to 1 to infinity z minus a raised to power minus n a minus n subscript of minus n so now here a n is this which we got from there here will be a dt also i forgot sometimes to add dt in some places but no i have done it everywhere here will be also dt but that doesn't matter it's simple and not very complex so now if you look at this expression carefully this is the same expression as the statement of the Lorentz series which is this this is the same expression in summation sign so this is how we prove the Lorentz series for complex analysis so thanks for watching this video and always remember that math is everything